Hello everyone. A little bit of a different video today and one that I hate that I have to make, but seeing as how we've been covering Aiden Chronicle here on the channel leading up to its release, it seems only right that I take a minute to talk about the passing of Yoshitaka Murayama, the father of the Soikoden series, one of my favorite series of JRPGs to ever be released, as well as the founder of Rabbit and Bear Studio, the makers of the soon-to-be-released Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes, Murayama's return to a Soikoden-style JRPG project after he left Konami in the middle of producing Soikoden 3. Uh, the news has been breaking quietly all morning that he passed February 6th, a little over a week ago, and much like his work and his legacy, the Soikoden series, Aiden itself, it's news that I feel should be more widely known because the talent of Murayama and his team and the influence of the Soikoden series on me and on a lot of people is much greater than its overall impact on the greater gaming sphere has ever really represented. And it's only right that you all know that he is gone. It's an incredible tragedy. And I'm going to read the statement here from Rabbit and Bear Studio in a moment, but I believe he's gone before his time. And I think it's an absolute tragedy that he's not going to be able to see Aiden released and see the response to it. Because I think it's going to be a very good, a very positive response. And seeing as how this is clearly a passion project for him that got funded via Kickstarter back in, what, 2020? That seems like it's going to be an absolutely massive, passion-filled project that he was the scenario writer for. Uh, that's a damn shame. Because I think it's going to revitalize interest a lot in this style of JRPG and make a lot of people aware of Soikoden who may not have been before. Uh, here's the statement, though, from Rabbit and Bear. They say, Hello, everyone. It's with a heavy heart and a deep sadness we must inform you that the scenario writer and head of Rabbit and Bear Studios, Yoshitaka Murayama, has passed away on February 6th due to complications with an ongoing illness. Murayama first began this journey of the creation of Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes in 2020 through the support of his very loving fans on Kickstarter. Throughout the three-plus year development of the game, it was always the passion from his fans that continued to drive his creative vision and motivate him to put his all into the project. His hard work on Aiden Chronicle as scenario writer was finished, but as his co-workers and friends, it saddens us to know that he won't get to see the reactions from his fans. However, even with those feelings, we need to accept the reality that he is no longer with us and continue to push his dream forward by releasing Aiden Chronicle to the world. We want to maintain his legacy and vision with this game and know that he would have wanted the rich world he has created with Aiden Chronicle to live on. His family sincerely appreciates your prayers and support, but asks for privacy and that no flowers, mail, or other offerings be sent. We will have more information on organizational changes to Rabbit and Bear, as well as changes to some of the Kickstarter rewards in the near future. For now, we appreciate your continued support, Rabbit and Bear Studios, Junko Kawano, Junichi Murakami, and Osamu Kamuta. It's a true tragedy because... To me, while your Dragon Quests and your Chrono Triggers and your Final Fantasies are the defining JRPGs of their era, and for most people are some of their favorite games, if not their outright favorite games ever made, and are what shaped the landscape of RPGs and JRPGs into what it is today. And they deserve that, absolutely. For me, it's actually Soikoden that has stood the test of time more than any other. You know, I'll go back and I'll replay Final Fantasy VIII, my first mainline Final Fantasy game, and I love it and I enjoy it. Um, my time that I've spent with Final Fantasy VII, my recent playthrough of Final Fantasy VI, all phenomenal experiences. I played Chrono Trigger on the channel the first time I had ever played it. It was excellent. I adored it. And from what I've seen and what I've played of the Dragon Quest games, they're phenomenal as well. But there is a connection that I have to Soikoden 1 and 2, especially 1, that I don't feel 
to those games. And I would be inclined to chalk that up to the fact that Soikoden is one of the games that I played with my dad growing up along th- alongside things like Final Fantasy Tactics. But Final Fantasy VIII was like that as well, as were a lot of other JRPGs that he played that I don't feel that same connection to. Soikoden 1 is a game that I go back and play with fair regularity because it just has something special going on something different it's unique not just because of your 108 stars of destiny the majority of whom are playable characters not just because you have a full castle home base that you build up over time not just because of the unique magic system with runes and the deep lore that's attached to them but the story the characters the way they're portrayed the evolution of the world through war and conflict and perseverance of the individual the fact that you can have so many characters of again 108 just party members even if they aren't all combatants but also villains companion npcs other parts of this world that all are well fleshed out interesting fun characters more so than you would expect from some of them who are just a cook. He's just a cook. But damn if he doesn't join the team and become a member of the overall party. There's something special to that. And I think it says a lot about Murayama and his vision that he was able to make the Soikiden series something so unique and special. I can only hope that the upcoming remaster bundled release of Soikoden 1 and 2 that Konami is doing does the series justice. And while, of course, I can't profess to know the relationship, if any, that Murayama had with Konami in these most recent years, I would only hope that Konami does the right thing and honors him or memorializes him in some way in this remastered release when they eventually wind up putting it out. They've delayed it, and we don't know what the release date is at this point. But um, Because it's a phenomenal game, and it's a phenomenal series, and he deserves that recognition, and more people really should have their eyes on these games. So there's not much else that I have to say about it. I just wanted to share the news, sad and tragic as it is, and let people know that we've lost one of the greats. Even if far fewer people recognized him as such than they probably should have. And hopefully I can help to rectify that a little bit. For now, coverage of Aid and Chronicle will continue, as will any coverage of any news related to the Soikoden 1 and 2 remaster project. I wish the team at Rabbit and Bear nothing but the best as they push forward to the release of Aiden, and I hope that Murayama's family are able to mourn his passing and be left in the peace that they clearly want. Rest in peace, Mr. Murayama. Your work has been something that's been very influential to me and to many people, and all I can do is thank you for that. With that said, though, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Seriously, stay safe and stay healthy out there. And above all else, remember to be good to each other. Bye now.